That's Pastor Twan totally right here on Guts Gospel United to say a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V, and we do thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. Totally to you. Do you give yourself totally to God? It will create in you a joyful worship. And we want to restore that joyful worship. And we're in the book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Now, many scholars assume that the returning exiles reached Jerusalem. In about the fifth month of the year. This is the timeline that Ezra uses later. Ezra chapter 7 verses 8 and 9. Ezra chapter 7 verses 8 and 9. If so, this means that the people take two months to locate themselves in their ancestral lands and villages. Now, in the seventh month, it is essential for them to get serious about the purpose of their journey. So the people come together as one man to Jerusalem. Most of the people are from the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, but people from other tribes are also present. It is therefore appropriate that the ancient name Israel is used to describe the people who assemble to fulfill their spiritual goals. So, something to think about. What special gathering events have made lasting impressions on your faith and why? Or have there been any gathering events that have made lasting impression on your faith? Think about it. Milestone celebrations, building dedications, uh, conventions, conferences. Have you had any such experience that would create a lasting impression on your faith? Bring you to that next level. Keep you holding on to the idea, the thought, the truth that God is good. So that you can have and experience joyful worship. I'm just wondering. The seventh month called Tishri or 
Ithanim is considered to be the most important month in the Hebrew year. It is equivalent to late September and early October. On the first day of the month, the people are to celebrate the Feast of Trumpets. This is found in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 to 25. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 to 25. The tenth month of the tenth of the month is the Day of Atonement, when special sacrifices are offered for the sins of the people. You can look at Leviticus chapter 16 for more details about the sin atonement offering. The Feast of Tabernacles or Booths or Sukkot begins on the 15th day and continues for seven days with a special eighth day as a holy convocation. Now Leviticus chapter 23 verses 33 through 43 that's Leviticus 23 verses 33 through 43 gives more information about this particular event in the na nation's history. So Going on to verse 2, Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, of, and Jerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, and builded the altar of the God of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Now the total number of priests in this return is 4,289. Where did I get that number? Ezra chapter 2, verses 36 through 39. Ezra chapter 2, verses 36 through 39. And the high priest is a certain Yeshua or Joshua. It is the priest who take the priests who take the lead in constructing the altar of God of Israel for the purpose of sacrificing burnt offerings. This is according to that which is written in the law of Moses, the man of God, as recorded in, among other places, Leviticus chapter 1. Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetil, is a grandson of King Jehoiakim, the next to last king of Judah. Now, there's some history on this, but I don't want to get too deep in it. You can look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 12, where Jehoiakim is listed by the alternate name Jeconus, and also Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 1, 27, verse 20, 28, verse 4, and 29, verse 2. There's more to say about Joshua and Jerubbabel and, uh, when we consider Ezra chapter 3 and 8. That's going to be next week's series. We stop just before that, so anticipate where we're going. So, something to think about. Something to ponder on, observe, work with. What do you remember about a church leader or a group of leaders? being a steadying influence during a time of transition. Now many of us have experienced transition in our churches at some point or another. What do you remember about a church leader or a group of leaders? Being a steadying, keeping us steady during the chaos of transition. During a time of internal church conflict, during a time of pressure from an outside source, culture, government, etc. Or even a natural disaster. Maybe there's some other experience. Just think about it. Reflect on what did you see during that time. Now, sacrifices have not been offered in Jerusalem since 586 B.C. when the Babylonians broke through the city defenses. Now, some 50 years later, it is a momentous occasion when the God-ordained sacrifices resume. The size of the new altar is not given. The dimensions of the original altar used for the tabernacle were width and length of five cubits each. A cubit is about 18 inches and the height of thir three cubits. You can find that in Exodus chapter 27, verse 1. That altar was constructed about 1444 B.C. while the Israelites were still at Sinai. Solomon began to build the temple about 480 years later. And the altar of burnt offerings was huge, 20 cubits wide and long and 10 cubits high. The new altar after the Babylonian captivity does not need to have such dimensions. A smaller one will suffice. Sometimes we think about how big something is, or how grand something is, or how great something is. Not understanding that uh, it's not the quantity, but the quality of your worship. So we try to punch the time clock for God. And, and again, that's not understanding that God is good everywhere, all the time. So we try to punch the time clock at church. And I'm not saying that going to worship at church isn't a bad thing. But if that's your only form of worship, in other words, if that's the only place you think God is, 
and that's the only time you are holy or in the mode of worship or in the mode of giving God glory then you err in your worship and you probably are not experiencing a joyful worship you're worshiping but you just don't know what like Jesus told the woman at the well verse 3 Ezra chapter 3 and dealing with the resuming of the offerings and the, the daily requirements that were taking place before we end up having to take a break. And they set altar, the altar upon its bases, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord, even burnt offerings morning and evening. Now there is no question about where to build the altar. It will be on the same place as the previous altars on the site. David had an altar constructed here after purchasing the threshing floor. And this is where Solomon, David's son, built the altar for the temple. The people are doing their best to follow the instructions given by Moses to follow the examples of godly leaders of centuries past. So think about this. What are some good ways to honor the godly examples of your church leaders past and present? Wow, we don't even think about that, do we? We, we, we don't even think that we have to honor that because we think that that's just wrong. Because they just men like we are, right? Maybe there's some big ways like banquets and stuff. Maybe there's small ways like notes in the church bulletin uh, saying we appreciate you. Thank you. You're doing a great job. We love you. And even being a blessing during those anniversaries and, and church celebrations and appreciations and making it so wonderful that there's no argument, there's no backbiting, there's no not allowing the enemy to get a foothold. Just some good ways to honor. Now the law of Moses prescribes that the burnt offerings morning and evening are to include one lamb each on a daily basis. Sabbath days require additional sacrifices. Such a, such offerings represent commitment and dedication. Ah, see? Additional sacrifices. They represent commitment and dedication. So there's your reasonable service and then you go the extra mile because that shows your commitment and your dedication. Now, there are other inhabitants in the region who do not appreciate the fact that almost 50,000 people have suddenly arrived in their land. They are probably a mixture of non-Israelites and a few Israelites who had been left behind by the Babylonians. The new arrivals have moved into the villages of ancestors, and now the city of Jerusalem is becoming their religious center. Animosity develops, and this creates fear for the Israelites. But God's people have struggled to make their journey, and they intend to finish what they started. They intend to complete the job that they have begun. You are tuned into Guts, Gospel United Save, a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki B, and we do thank you for tuning into the broadcast. We hope you continue to tune in Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The number to call, 877-217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. We thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast. We hope that you will continue to do so. And we also want to remind you that you are welcome to join us on this Saturday. We will be there distributing groceries from 1 to 2 at the Fort Lauderdale Multicultural Church of God in Christ, 744 Northwest 12th Avenue in the city of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where the senior pastor is Pastor Roger A. Grimes. And we do thank God for all of you tuning into the broadcast. I'm Nikki V, hoping you'll have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back after this. Turns out, landlords must make reasonable accommodations for assistance animals. 
If you think you've been discriminated against, call HUD at 1-800-669-9777 or go to hud.gov slash fair housing. Fair housing is your right. Use it. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. This is our slogan. We say that HIV AIDS stops with me. If you can say this and then you can be able to take a stand with us that says, if I have HIV AIDS, I will not spread it. And if I don't have HIV AIDS, I will not acquire it. HIV AIDS stops with me. Brought to you by Cooperation for Restoring Families in Brooklyn and this radio station. Together, we can. Gospel, united to say it's the gut gospel show, a variety talk show with a Christian view. Your host, Nikki B, featuring open discussions, event spotlight, and first guest. Tune in weekdays, break out the day, wake up for the morning show at 7 a.m. Tune in for the midday show at 3.30 p.m. And ride home with the evening show at 6 p.m. And Saturdays at 10 a.m. The gut gospel show. Right, sing unto the Lord a new song, Larry McCullough. The Lord is great. Yeah, we thank God for that, and we thank God for each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. You are tuned into Guts Gospel United to Save, a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. The number to call 877 217 5375. That's 877 217 5375. Joyful worship restored. And as Larry McCullough on, right here on Guts with the Lord is great. And we do thank God for him. It's part of the third quarter release entitled The Morning. And we do thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast. Now, we left off and we were talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. We're in Ezra chapter 3 and we're at verse 4. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles as it is written and offered the daily burnt offerings by number according to the customs as the duty of every day required. The duty of every day required. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles goes by other names and it's easy to get confused. The first mention of this festival in the Bible calls it the Feast of Ingathering, Exodus chapter 23, verse 16b. That's Exodus chapter 23, verse 16b. It takes place in the fall at the end of the harvest season. The festival is sometimes referred to the Feast of Booths. You can check that out in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33 through 43. That's Leviticus 23, 33 through 43. And it instructs the Israelites to use tree branches to construct booths. And the people are to live in them during the feast. Hence the name Feast of Booths. Uh, the purpose of living in these makeshift structures is to remind the people that their ancestors lived in tents during the 40 years of the wilderness wanderings. This event then is something like a seven day camp out with feasting every day. It is a day for everyone to rejoice the widows, orphans, Levites, and strangers. The harvest is over and it's time to celebrate. Because, quite frankly, the Lord is great. He is a wonder for us. Now, the emphasis here is on the altar. Detailed instructions regarding the types of sacrificial offerings that are to be made throughout the feast are found in Numbers chapter 29, verses 12 through 39. That's Numbers chapter 29, verses 12 through 39. 
The altar has been built and the people are experiencing the joy that comes from being able to worship the Lord again in the promised land. Uh, they had been in captivity for quite some time, uh, 50 years I believe is the, the time frame exactly. And it is now time to be able to celebrate and trust me you're going to celebrate. When you've been in captivity for a long time, when you've been in bondage for a long time, and you find your release is nigh. That's the time to celebrate. Joyful worship. Restored. Restored because you begin to understand God is good. The Lord is great. He is uh, the great I am. He is the wonder of our soul. He is the deliverer. He is our way maker. He is the established ruler. He is the truth. And he is the way. He is the life. So we are excited and ecstatic about who he is. But if you don't know who he is, it's hard to worship him. It's hard to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now there are some other requirements that are being asked of uh, the children of Israel, the other requirements that are being uh, done during this time, and we find them in Ezra chapter 3, verse 5. And afterward, offering the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and of everyone that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. Now this verse makes the very important point that sacrifice continues to be offered after the initial enthusiasm that is associated with the completion of the altar. So that means that it's more than just the emotion of it. We're not just excited over this brand new toy and we're just playing with it until it gets old. The sacrifice is continued even after it was built. The priests offer the morning and evening sacrifices and they fulfill their obligations at the beginning of each month as determined by a new moon. In addition to the Feast of Tabernacles, the Israelites are conscientious about all the feasts of the Lord. They begin to remember, I need to celebrate the God of my salvation. Because when I didn't celebrate him with my whole heart, in other words, when I just did it with my lips, when I didn't have joyful worship, when I was just putting on airs, when I had the facade, when I had the front, God put me into exile. In other words, we got captured because we thought that the other gods was bigger than our God. But ain't no God bigger than my God, you understand? So we have to get that in our system. We have to understand God is good. The Lord is great. And they began to get that. And they said, you know what, we're not going to just do this ritualistically. We're going to do this with every fiber of our being. These included the one day Passover observances. That is followed immediately by the seven day feast of unleavened bread. These take place in the spring of the year. They commemorate the exodus from Egypt. Another important observance of is the one day feast of harvest. Its name is in line with the fact that the grain harvests are usually completed in Israel by early June. This, this festival is celebrated approximately seven weeks after Passover. It is also called the Feast of Weeks, eventually coming to be known as Pentecost. Aha. Pentecost. See that? My goodness. And you thought it was just about the 50, the 50 days of Christ and this, just that whole thing for the New Testament for the Apostles. It was also a feast for Israel in the Old Testament. I know y'all don't want me to blur those lines because you want to keep it separate because you want to do what you want to do. But you have to understand the whole Bible is for the whole man, not just part in here and part there. The last part of the verses indicates that free will offerings are being made on a regular basis by people who are thrilled to be able to express their gratitude to God in this way. We know that the dedication of a new facility brings a surge in attendance. But without true commitment, enthusiasm will cool as other things assume a higher priority. That does not seem to be the case here. And they kept up with what they needed to keep up with. We have to keep up with what we need to keep up with. You ought to be blessing your ministry. Whatever it is, wherever you are, or whatever church you belong to, if you belong to it, you ought to be giving that free will offering. You ought to make it exciting. You ought to be, if you think your church is dead, that's not nobody's fault but yours. Oh, I know somebody mad at me now because you want to blame the preacher. You want to blame everybody else. But guess who has to make it interesting? Guess who has to make it exciting? Guess whose relationship has to make it worthwhile? You. If my relationship with God isn't worthwhile, I'm going to leave it on the side. Am I not? Anything that you love, you take care of. But what you don't like, you let it go. Okay. Don't get mad at me. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. It seems harsh, but it is for real. You don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. You could change the channel. You could turn the knob. But of course, you already heard that point. So you might as well stick around and find out what the rest of the story is going to be. Might as well. You understand. So we ought to give God the praise. Not be emotionally high, but be for real joyful.
not just have happiness happening because things look good and the buildings are being put up but even after the building fund has been used to make the temple beautiful still be committed be dedicated so what can you do to keep a sense of joy in your worship what is it that you can do see because remember we're talking personal now we want to try to push stuff off on other folks and try to say, well, the preacher ain't preaching a hot enough message. The, 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 the missionary ain't doing this. The evangelist ain't doing that. They're a bunch of hypocrites. What can you do? What is it that you need? Look at yourself. Let's take a self-examination. Let's take a self-test. Before a worship service begins, how can we get hyped for it? You know, you get hyped for concerts. You get hyped for uh, sports, sporting events. Uh, who gets hyped for church? I don't know. I do. How about you? During a worship service, do you get hyped during the worship service, or do you wait for the praise team to try to pump you up and prime you up? Are you ready to go? Is your oil? Do you have oil in your lamp, or are you trying to talk about can I get some? Do you have to go out and buy some? Come on, y'all, don't be mad. I'm not here to upset you. I'm really here to bless you. If you'll take it, if you'll use the information, if you'll allow it to transform you, you will benefit from it. Now, just before we transition, because we've got to transition out. The temple of God represents a special place, and the things inside a special meaning. The children of Israel endured many transitions while serving their God. They carried the Ark of the Covenant, they served Him in a tent, and they built a beautiful temple, all so His presence could continually dwell among them. We still have that same ideology. We think that the only place that the Spirit of God dwells is in the temple. That's why some people won't cuss in church. That's why some people won't lie in church. That's why some people won't, they won't do it in church. Now, they'll do it outside. But they don't do it in church. Again, misunderstanding of who God is. God is good all the time. He's great everywhere. So you can't just try to be holy in the holy place. Because you're supposed to be a holy place. Because in you is supposed to dwell the Holy Spirit. Don't get mad. Get glad. This is transformative for you. This is transformational for you. This is something that can make all of us be better. Not bitter. It's time for us to love one another. It's time for us to give everything we got to make everything better. But you've got to make that transition. You've got to make that escape. You've got to try to find a way to enjoy the truth of what God has given us. You tune in to Guts Gospel United States. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V, and we thank you so much for tuning in to the broadcast. You can join us by calling 877 877- 217-5375. That's 877-217-5375. Thank you again for tuning into the broadcast. I'm Nikki V. Hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Back after this. Hey. How you doing? Better. So am I, am I coming in this Saturday? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. You good? Yeah. Okay. So we just do the opening. Uh, about ten, right? Yeah, almost. A possible woman may be calling me. Okay. Um, did you bring your CD or? No, I okay. want to push the screen. You know what I mean?
Good morning, good morning, good morning, South Florida, and uh, everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice around the world. This is uh, the People's Apostle uh, Howard Akins Jr. Uh, just, uh, just to give you some information uh, 